Hey everyone, and welcome to Anarchy, the podcast about anime's two brothers. I'm Ben. I'm Jonathan. And this week is the penultimate episode of Hyoka. That's true. We're almost done, folks. Almost. Almost to the end. Uh, if you want relationship drama and things not working out the way you want it to, then by golly, we got some shows for you. Yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of silliness going on in, in this episode. And by silliness, I mean just teenagers being angsty. Like, way too angsty. Them crazy teens. Also, if you've been waiting for an episode where Satoshi actually develops a personality, you get one. Yep. That's about it. This, this is it. He this gets a personality. Get. It's kind of sad and... He's kind of a it's jerk. not a good personality, if I'm if I'm honest. Kind of a jerk. Why don't you catch us up on what happened with the old Uh It happened. We're over it. They uh, had some bummers in a library. They uh, sat in a room and discussed um, an announcement. They uh, got trapped in a shed. And now, and now, it's it's time for Valentine's Day, and it's time for it. Infy chocolates. And OMG, middle school Satoshi and middle school Ibarra are the best. Best at being the worst? Yep. This week's episode opens with Ibarra berating an obviously pained and ashamed Satoshi over the fact that, you know, in the hypothetical situation that someone bought chocolate yeah. and melted it uh-huh. and reshaped it, yep. does that not make it homemade? To make homemade, uh... Valentine's chocolate, as one does in Japan. Should we take the time to explain? Jap- I think we should Japanese uh, uh, Valentine's Day. Yes, because it's overly complicated. It's a little silly. People like to complain that our Valentine's Day was made up by candy companies, but boy howdy, there's Japan literally was literally made up was by made candy up by candy companies. So yeah, in Japan on Valentine's Day, uh, February fourteenth, all girls who want to express some sort of feelings for a senpai or a classmate, any boy, you know, that they feel the need to express these kinds of feelings for, they'll make them chocolate at home. And then they'll give them to them in your little bag, with your little card. You only give chocolate to someone who you want to be a significant other or you have a crush on, and it's either very fancy and expensive and store-bought or, you know, you make it yourself. By that, we mean melt it down and reform it. Or, like it. or you could be one of those really sad boys who receive white chocolate. Oh. Now, if there was ever a friend zone signal, that is definitely a friend zone well, considering signal. Considering white chocolate is not real chocolate. It's fake. Everything is fake. Not real chocolate. So that's what happens on Valentine's Day. And then a month later on March 14th, yep. which is white day, mm-hmm. uh, all the boys have to reciprocate yep. if they feel the same. So they got a month buffer period where the guy can be all Sundere or whatever guys are. Yandere. I hope not. That'd yeah. be weird. Yeah, that's creepy. Yandere with chocolate? Yeah, it's like scary. Like smashing chocolates everywhere on people's faces and breaking their hearts. Yeah. That'd be pretty Yandere, I think. It would be. So that that's where we are in this situation because this is clearly a flashback in this opening scene where Bara has given Satoshi chocolate that she bought melted and reshaped which is still a lot of work yeah let's let's be honest i mean it's as close to homemade as a sane individual will get right because she's like 13 what else what else she got uh, 13 14 she would be a ninth grader yeah somewhere in there but satoshi is not having it he's refusing it because it's not real homemade chocolate you see because he's trying to get out of this she hulks out, oh my. tears it up in Does front she? of him, screaming that next year she'll make a masterpiece and he'll have no choice but to shove it in his face. Yeah, because she eats her own chocolate, gosh darn it. She's going to do it, and next year, next year things will be different. And oh man, she makes a scene. Like, everyone is turning and looking at this goings on. Obviously, though, this is in the past. It's not really obvious at, at first, but it is in the past because she has cuter hair now. Yeah, and she walks by the middle school sign. When she runs right, away at the end, if you weren't, if you hadn't caught up by that point. So then we get our op. Yep. And then we get our delightful title, the homemade chocolates case. And if you didn't know the Japanese word for chocolate choco, by the end of this episode, it's choco. We're going to be talking about choco's your head. so much. 
Choco, 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 choco. Just no chocobos. No, just unfortunately. Choco. So we start the episode proper. Yeah. Ibarra is in the geo prep room with Oreki and Chitanda. Mm-hmm. She's discussing with Chitanda her plans to make chocolate completely from scratch. Like, go get the cocoa nibs, get the cocoa butter, and we're going to do this wholesale. She's like, here's yeah. what's going to happen. I'm going to lock him up in a tower, and I'm just going to feed him chocolate to his face and make him eat it this time. And we get a cool yeah. flashback of her basically, not flashback, a cutaway of her being like an evil witch mahal. Yeah, she's got him in the stockades, and she's shoving it down his throat because yeah. he didn't take it. And she's got this stack of books with uh, notes, bookmarks, diagrams, I think a slide rule. She's yeah. probably got a wall at home with recipes and thumbtacks and string yep. everywhere. I was going to bring that up. It, it all goes back to, to gold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my gold leaf. I was going to say, it's all uh, chocolate tails and uh, buy gold. If Satoshi doesn't take this and he doesn't even appreciate it after she shoves it down his throat, she's going to sit there and read him one of these books so he can appreciate how hard she worked on it. Basically, she's decided that the only other person that she can trust with this information is Chitanda because, you know, Chitanda can cook. We learned that from the time she cooked real good. Yeah. Real good. Yeah. Oreki here is having some trepidation about her... uh, about Ibarra's sudden turn for darkness. Yeah. With the whole torture and um, subjugation stuff. Can- candy feeding fetish. And then Chitanda's like, now, now, Ibarra, I've got your back. Ibarra does swear, make uh, Chitanda swear to secrecy. So no so no of information can, can get to Satoshi. Oreki thinks to himself, what is this? Like, like you're going on like I'm not even in the room. And I'm like, oh, Oreki, you don't count as a people. You should know that by now. But then she does remember him. And uh, turns and tells him very sweetly to please keep your mouth shut. Please, pretty please, because if you don't, I'm going to kill you. Murder. Th- this episode, uh, while all about Valentine's Day, yeah. takes some pretty dark turns. It takes some very dark turns everybody. personality-wise. Turns out everybody but Oreki and Chitanda's a jerk. Of course, we already knew Ibarra was a jerk, and we were kind of sure Satoshi was a closet jerk. We now find out he is a complete jerk. Totally. 100% jerk. So we cut away from that. We have Oreki walking home after school and he spots Satoshi's bike by an arcade. Yeah, they're so, by oh. uh, the Crown Center. Uh, you see Usagi run away uh, from the right. front of it. Uh, to she's go. running away with toast in her mouth yep. and uh, Mamoru is chasing her for some reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's some yakety yak cats from outer space. So Satoshi also walks out of this arcade and is like, hey, we haven't been here in a while. Uh, why don't you come in and play your old fighting robot game? I like fighting robots. Uh, they should like be playing robots? Hell of Scream, okay? I don't even know what that is. Uh, is that awesome? Uh, Hell of Scream is sweet. I mean, I don't know. They're not playing it. It's there in the background in this arcade, and it's some game called Hell of Scream, and it's great. <laughs> Hold on a that second. That sound amazing. Hell of um, Scream. Hell of Scream. Not Scream yes. of Hell, which would make sense. This is a Hell of Scream. It's an arcade game where it just screams at you the entire time. You put in <laughs> you put in 100 yen, and it just screams at you. You can't do anything so. to make it stop. It just does. For a solid 10 wow. minutes, it just screams. It is a hell that's, of screams. That's fantastic. I want it. I want it. I'm pretty sure that's some, some experimental game they have at Indiecade every year. Yeah. Well, they are actually playing the robot fighting game, and uh, Oreki notices that Satoshi's gameplay has changed since last year yeah. when they played. It turns out young Satoshi was a tryhard and was miserable to play games with. He was the type of player who would, like, shoot you once and then hide behind buildings the whole game. That way, you know, he had some damage on you, and you never got any damage on him, so he'd win by default. Yay! That's awesome. That sounds so like a winning. camper. That sounds like fun. Uh, no. No, and apparently when that strategy did not work and he lost, he, he would a little freaking hissy fit. flip out and just have a fit. A little hissy fit. So Oreki notes that, hmm, he has changed probably in a strong and fundamental way. Yeah. All from watching him play a robot game. Well, I mean, this is Oreki. This is what he does. That's his special talent. Uh, meanwhile, we cut to Chitanda and Ibarra. I, I did want to point out here that maybe the reason Satoshi is not hung up on winning all the time is because Oreki has beaten that out of him by being so much better than him. And that's really depressing. I mean, at this point, you might be right. Loss after loss after loss. This has been 20 episodes of straight Satoshi loses. So, you know. Poor Satoshi. He didn't deserve any of this. I mean, he doesn't deserve a borrow, that's for sure. 
yeah, Obara and Chitanda are at the candy shop. Yep. Which feels like a cutaway to a song song number. Ibarra is having anxiety attacks about which ribbons she wants to put on the chocolate for Satoshi. Well, I mean, he's, she's been trying to get him to accept Valentine's chocolate for probably like four years at this point. Well, we at least know for the last 12 months. Yeah. She can't decide. Then she tries something. She's like, hey, Chitanda, Chitanda, Chitanda do you while have... I'm having a panic attack, is there anyone you, you might want to like? give some chocolate to? Some little chuckle chuckle. And her mind melts and she's like, nope, 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 nope. Well, she opens her mouth to answer and then we cut away to a disheveled Oreki waking up uh, and scratching himself. This is the best scene in the Valentine's entire Day. in the entire episode. It really is. <laughs> yeah, he walks outside. There's a little folded origami box, handmade, handmade origami box. It's just outside his bedroom door. And my first thought is, oh, Chitanda has snuck into his house and left him a gift. Uh, she is now sleeping under Oreki's house. Obviously. How else would she get in? There? As you do. And he, he picks up this box. He's like, what, <laughs> He's the, like, what in the world? What is this thing? Defer? I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> what is this? He opens it up and there's like a Hershey's bar, a, a discount Hershey's bar. Not even Hershey's. It's like Blurshies. It's a Blurshies bar <laughs> <laughs> with a note strapped to it. And it's like, here you go. Here's a present of one bar of chocolate. It's pity chocolate from your good old sister. With warm and tender pity. With warm and tender pity. Signed, your sister. He contemplates this for a second and he, then he, summarily rejects it. Here's by what I like. Here's what room. I like. He like he puts the lid back on the box, puts the box on the ground, steps around it, steps back on it, and kicks it into his room as hard as he can. <laughs> the fact that he doesn't oh, throw man. it on the ground. No, he takes the time, carefully replaces the lid, steps around it, lines up his shot, and just smacks it into his own room. Three points. Soccer kick as hard as he can. Good job. So, again, we cut away. A lot of cuts in this, this yeah, episode. Yeah, there's no long, no long scenes like, like the last one, or the one before. So that was one scene? Yeah, just, let's not ever leave this room forever. Uh, we, we cut to Oreki walking to school on the fated day. Yep. And Chitanda catches up to him. Maybe she's yeah. got chocolate for him? Maybe. Does Maybe. it? Let's find out. Let's find out. All we know. So they get to talk, talking yes, about we, Ibarra. We find out the good old Ibarra has a uh, manga club. St- has Still yep. has manga drama she has to deal with. So she, Ibarra, is just going to leave the chocolate in the geoprep room after school where nothing bad could ever happen to it ever in the history of forever. No, no, no. Nothing bad could happen. Never. But I am thinking, why would manga club, who has to know that she is head over heels for Satoshi. Yeah. Keep her on Valentine's Day. Uh, like, what in the world could they possibly do other than bully her all the time? Uh, probably to... There's probably a contingent there that is like, look, Satoshi's a jerk. You don't... We're <laughs> trying to save you from yourself here, Ibarra. <laughs> trying to save possible. you from yourself. You think Raymu could do that? Yeah, no, probably. With her, uh, with her dick butt skills. Dick butt. <laughs> uh... We also find out from Chitanda that, you know, Ibarra did manage to make, like, the best thing of chocolate ever in the history of forever. Well, Oreki is like, I bet you finished them all, didn't you? Nah, hey, now. That, like, that's, that, not, that's, not, that's not nice. That's, that's uncalled nice. for. She she made a masterpiece. She put her heart into it. Heart and Labu know. Labu. Not just one Labu. All of it. Two Everything. Labus. Two full cups of Labus is in that chocolate. Two scoops of raisins, two scoops of Labus. By the way, Oreki, um, today is Valentine's Day. Yeah. And he gets the biggest gulp. Yeah, like, is this Uh-oh. is this happening? Am I is okay this, with this happening? Am I not okay on? with this happening? Am I okay with this? He's like, wait, but in, in my family, we don't give presents to people we're actually close to. So that's why. That's why. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Don't, don't finish that sentence. <laughs> Please. What exactly does that mean, what you just said? It means Oreki is not getting Chichoko, and we're going to avoid this problem for as long as possible, because they haven't resolved this uh, romance arc in the novels yet, so we can't have them, like, do that here in the show. <laughs> Actually get that, together. That would be bad. Well. We'll find out next episode. <laughs> oh. I feel like he, he actually stopped her there, because he's like, wait, before you finish that sentence, you say you're not going to give presents to people you're actually close to? Yeah. So let's let's not find out what you were or were not going to do 
with whatever presence you may or may not have. Yes, let's, let's, just, let's, not, just, let's just leave that. Let's and just leave that hanging. Inside. And we'll, yeah. uh, we'll ignore this problem till next year. I'm going to pull a Satoshi, a patented Satoshi, and be like, you know what? It was going to snow today, so let's go to class, <laughs> please. Yeah, otherwise going to be late. Yeah, That's okay. Bad. Let's just that. walk on opposite sides of the sidewalk. What will be, will be. Yep. Ibarra leaves the chocolate in the geo prep room because nothing terrible happened to it. Cactus is standing guard. I know. That's it's what I fun. said. The chocolate was for the cactus the whole time. <laughs> no one ever thought that cactus may be involved in this dastardly plot. But who knows? It was who knows? The, the chocolate was for cactus. Who has always been there for her? We do get a shot of this chocolate that Ibarra has made. It is magnifique. It's big and ornate. Oh, yeah. Like, it's the size of a dinner plate, and it's got decorations, it's wrapped in cellophane, it's got, like, like, all, everything. It's got Chitanda L's all over it. Really? Little, um, little angels? I think it does. That's awesome. I'm oh, it's actually it's the exact same little angels that were accosting Oraki oh so many episodes ago. That's the best. I do like, there's, there's a rapid cut here of the show that it's after school, and there's, like, a girl giving somebody a box of chocolates in the, mm. in the locker room, and... And you see snow falling so heavily outside, snow and sleet, and I miss it so much, dear brother. We don't get snow like that. You can come here and get your fill of it, along with our humidity, anytime you want. I want the first half, but not the back half. Oh, well, you gotta gotta have good with the bad, and bad with the good. I just want snow. So, because there's so much snow outside, Oreki has decided that he is going to not go to club right now. Yeah, because it's cold in there, because that room does not stay hot. Uh, Oreki has decided that he's going to go to the library because it's not warm in the geo prep room. It's, it's always um, always very chilly in there. There's probably too much drama, and he'd rather read a book where one can normally read books and not be bothered than to deal with chocolate or any of the fallout thereof. Uh, he does let Satoshi know that, you know, uh, Ibarra has manga club, so it, there might be something in the geo prep room, Satoshi. Satoshi, good luck, Satoshi. Don't mess this up. Don't be a dumb. Spoilers, he's a giant dumb. Chitanda wanders into the geo prep room, and she is going to camp this out just waiting for Satoshi, because that's the type of person she is. She's so excited. She's so excited. She gets she to sit there and guard so the thing, and she gets to see the Labu Labus happen, and just the happiness, and she gets to bask in all that. She is just so thrilled. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh boy. But then, after a while... She comes down to Oreki in the library. Apparently, um, the man of the hour, Mr. Satoshi-kun, hasn't, shown, hasn't up yet. shown up yet. Yeah. Where could he be? Where could he be? Hmm. Calling George Costanza. Where could he be? He's like, I don't know. Who knows where he is? Could be anywhere. So she reluctantly walks back to the, to the prep room. And then after a little bit longer, the storm has cleared. The sleet has Oreki stopped. Gets ready to head out. Oh, but what is this? In the library, here she comes. All a fluster, with a shady-looking jerk behind her. It's terrible. Oh my goodness. You don't know. Guys, stop the presses. Everything's everything's ruined. Uh, everything is burned down. To be fair, Chitanda, last time you said everything was ruined, it's because my theory had a slight hole in it. Yeah, well, this time it's for real. Like there was a, a a major crime. Like the worst thing that could possibly happen is just happened. Like it's the worst. You don't know. Everything is ruined. Holy crap! Ibarra's choco got yoinked. It's the worst. You don't know. But it's all her fault because she was there and then she left. But she didn't lock the door, and so when she got back, it was gone. And she it was all her fault. She shouldn't have left with the door and the key. I don't. The janitor probably got it. I don't. Where? Yeah, how? Is it, what's what's going on? Poor Tanda. She's flipping out. She's. <laughs> She's too young for this. She's too innocent to realize that there's darkness in this world that would steal random chocolate. <laughs> clearly intended for Fukube Satoshi. Oreki, knowing that he is not going to get any kind of sensible answer out of Chitanda, turns to the man of the hour, Satoshi, and is like, yo, what happened? He's like, the chocolate got stolen. Chaco's gone. Dun, dun, dun. Oreki wants to bounce, but, you know, Chitanda's flipping out. She can't, she can't take it. It's too much. Oreki is looking back and forth, and before he's even really asked, he's like, fine, I'll help. 
Mostly because I don't want to encounter Ibarra after she finds out what happened. Yeah. Now, I want you to take a look at Satoshi's face when he hears that Oreki is going to help solve this mystery. Does it look like his face at all other times during this episode? No. It looks... Is it even worse than normal? It's worse than normal. I don't think Satoshi's happy about this. I don't think he wants Oreki to be helping with this mystery. I well, think this is I bad mean, for him. Normally... You would look at this, not having seen the end of the episode, and you look at his expression here and you think, oh, he's shocked that without being bidden at all, and without Shitani even asking, Oreki has volunteered to do a mystery. Well, I think it's because... On his own. Look, Oreki has, al has already done the um, cost-benefit analysis of helping versus not helping on this, and it does not look good. So he knows no. he's going to have to help out with this, or things yep. are going to go rapidly downhill for him. The benefits of going home are he gets to go home. The downside of going home is he has to deal with Ibarra with a demon mask on. Not just that, but you also have to deal with, you know, a very Chitanda. sad Jatanda. So sad. So we get to the second part of our episode, as that is our break. As our trio trudges off to the geoprep room, they move to take the west staircase. But what is this? It's waxed. Nobody could have used the west staircase. It's locked. Suddenly, it's almost a locked room. So they're going to have to go to the east staircase. Where there's a dude yep. in the staircase hanging a poster yep. for a crafts club. Uh-huh. He's very bad at crafts, turns He's out. He's not good. He needs a level real bad. He asks the, the three of them, hey, guys, is this poster straight? Because I don't know. They each offer their own little things. Tonda's like, Oreki's oh, it's a like, trapezoid? That's weird. Satoshi's like, oh, one side's too low now. And Oreki's and like, I like, don't like, care. Yeah, this is stupid. Let's... Whatever. So they get to the scene of the crime. Yep. Cactus suspiciously is silent on the matter. Oh, he is. I if oh mm. and look, he is looming with a deep shadow here. I think this is some foreshadowing for sure. I it definitely sounds like it. Cactus. Cactus, what has happened to you? Have you gone over to the dark side? I see brown in your pot. Is it dirt or is it chocolate? Mm -mm. It's chocolate. Cactus Probably. did it. He has a thorny heart. You don't know. So, Chitanda reiterates what happened. She came back at five. She was only gone 15 minutes. And Satoshi's like, no, don't don't worry about it. It's it's my fault. I was I was late. So, whatever happens, it's on me. Yeah. But Oreki asked the most important question. Does Ibarra know yet? <laughs> yeah, that is the most pertinent question. Does Ibarra know about what has happened to her chocolate? Yeah. That determines whether or not we should, like, find shelter or not. Batten down the hatches, you know. Run Cold away. War shelters are probably still around. Maybe we should get into one of those. Chitanda goes on. She says that, no, she doesn't know. In fact, Chitanda and Satoshi arrived at the same time at 5 o'clock. Yep. And together they searched the room. They searched as much of the building as they could and couldn't find it. No chocolate. Like, Oreki, being a man of action, is like, all right, well, this is going to be simple. Let's go ask that craft guy. Was he here when uh, you went downstairs before Satoshi? Oh, yeah, he was. Okay, well, that's good. So let's go. Yeah. yeah. Well, Satoshi's like, whoa, 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 hang on. Whoa, whoa, guys. What if, what if he stole it? What if Craft Guy stole it? Yeah. Or he's like, look, dude, no one's going to steal it and then just stand around for like 15 minutes afterwards asking people, calling attention to himself by being like, is my poster straight? Unless it's a double bluff and he's a mastermind. What if, what if the poster is the chocolate? Maybe he remelted it. Mm. And now it's in plain sight, where they would look last. True. You never know. They, uh, they get back down to him. The poster is still a sconce. worse. Yeah. So they ask him, um... I love Chitata in this episode. Yeah, I've got her written down verbatim, I think. Yeah. They ask this dude, Yeah. how many people have passed so far? He's like, three. And Chitanda immediately launches in. She's like, like what kind who of horrible people were they? Like? Were they, they? Have beards, Tell me their they names. Glasses? Let me know where their whereabouts are that I may track them down and take from them their blood, which is the only retribution that is just for their heinous, unspeakable, horrific crime. So help me, God, I will tear them limb from... Hey, Chitanda. What? Uh, how many of us are there? Uh, one. Um, a, a, a two. Who? A three. Oh. Oh. Three. Yeah, oh. the, the culprit's on the fourth floor somewhere still, probably. It was us just, three that passed by. Just so you know. So they start, so they ask the database, Satoshi, what clubs are also on floor four? He rattles off some, but he also mentions astronomy club. 
And we know what Astronomy Club thinks of food. Or of really anything. anything. Those guys yeah. are monsters. <laughs> now, now, hold on. Are they actually a club that likes astronomy? Or are these like one of these dark star cults that are trying to bring a cosmic horror from beyond the stars themselves to feast on our very life essence? That's hard to say, given what they did at the cooking competition. Yeah, see, I think it's option two. Mm, I think that's there are dark stars. I, have they discovered the Tau galaxy? No, not yet. Because it's cloudy today, so uh, they're having a party instead of actually, you know, astronomy -ing. Instead of trying to contact Pharaoh 90. Right, yeah. right. If Astronomy Club is the only one of these clubs besides Classic Club who hasn't gone home, seems seems pretty obvious. Let's go over to Astro Boo. So, you whoa, know. Whoa, whoa. What? What? Satoshi calls out. He's like, hey, 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 Oreki, what if the sleet starts again? Don't you want to just go home? Go home? Uh -huh. Just go home. It's a good idea. I mean, what's going to happen here? Doesn't work. Doesn't uh, work. You know what would happen here? First off, I would get murdered by Ibarra, and second, I would have to deal with sad Tonda all day, which is a big no no. Mm, yeah. No 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 no. I no, wouldn't no. deal with that. They go down to uh, they go down to Crazy Club. Crazy Bucho answers the door. Yeah. And like, Tonda. You know, it's like, oh, hey, hello. It's Hi, Astronomy Club. Club. What are you guys doing here? Uh, you whores, you pick up chocolate. chocolate, or I will rip off your still-beating heart from your chest and shove it out here. Oh, hey, Senpai, we would just like to uh, ask you about some goings-on. <laughs> you so... <laughs> Chitanda's such the greatest. <laughs> At this chocolate. point, I decided that uh, Chitanda, in her spare time, is a Yakuza enforcer. I guess. She's not been a secret yandere this whole time. She's been <laughs> like she has to be physically restrained. restrained yeah, to stay at away. This one. Yeah, she has to be pulled away, and the other two like hide her behind them because she is super freaking out. Like yeah, yeah. It's like, oh no, <laughs> chill out. What's happening? <laughs> chill, Tonda. Chill, Tonda. <laughs> so uh, they explain. The current situation yeah, the, to Crazy Bucho. Some chocolate got lost. Have you have you seen anybody? Uh, we're looking for witnesses. And the Astro she, she Bucho. She thinks this is hilarious. Oh yeah, she's she does. Like, she's really? like, you've got a, a love, love thief. thief. That's the best. She's like, oh, oh, chocolate. Hey, hey, guys back there. Have any of you seen any chocolate? And they're like, we haven't seen chocolate if our lives depended on it. Oh, they're just playing D&D. &D. Are they really? They got like polyhedrons there and character sheets. That's I think awesome. they're just playing D&D. Well, I mean, you're not half wrong with your whole they're summoning some sort of evil horror. Yeah. But yeah, they're like, dude, can you please not kick us while we're down? Yeah. Why would you mention chocolate and how we have not seen any all day? Uh, that's just that's just mean. And she she turns back to the classic club and was like, see, we haven't seen your chocolate. Take your crazy. And that's something coming from me. And go away. Okay, bye. She turned us like close the door. Man, they were. They didn't seem to be in a very good mood. <laughs> it's like, well, of course, of course they're mad. Of course they're in a bad mood. Good job being observant, Chitanda. Uh, it's worth noting that in uh, Astronomy Club, there were three people that, you know, went to the bathroom during the time frame, and it was two boys and a girl. Right. Yeah. So that will be important here in a bit. So the three musketeers go back to the club. Uh, Satoshi is... Still having some pretty mixed feelings about all this. Yeah, are you gonna are you gonna fess it, up there? Well, it it feels Oosh. it felt to me at this point like he wasn't feeling like he wanted it to be found. I mean, but he didn't want it to be found. No, he does not want it to be found. That's true. But maybe not for the reasons I initially thought. Yeah, I just thought, well, this is convenient for him because you know now this isn't a problem. But also, if it just went away, that'd be great. Isn't that it handy? Comes back. He has to deal with life. Yeah. And Satoshi is an expert at avoiding life. Yeah. He's Whereas a millennial Ricky, through and through and wants to live in his parents' basement and mooch off their health care for the end of time. Sorry, that got too political. I'll walk it back <laughs> a bit. He's a Bernie Sanders supporter. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I did it again. Oh. <laughs> well, Oreki just wants this whole thing. He wants to make Classics with. Club great again. <laughs> <laughs> I could keep going. I think we'll lose all listenership, but I could keep going. <laughs> we may gain some. You have no idea. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he just wants to be done with this whole thing because he may have figured it out by now. Yeah. Because he's like, hey, Chitanda, did you check the girls on it? <laughs> yeah. She, he, he knows a quick way to get rid of Chitanda, which is just be like, you know, it could be in the bathroom. What? Whoop. Off she goes. 
Satoshi's like, is it really, really in the girl's bathroom? He's like, not a chance. Not a chance, because I think it's Satoshi's a jerk. Satoshi asks, well, then why would you? He's like, Satoshi, basically figured it out. So shut your mouth. Shut up. He's like, don't talk to me like, or my son ever again. His son is Cactus. He's like, all right. He, he knows he's been caught. Oh, yeah. So Chitanda comes back, and then Ibarra shows up. Oh, oh. oh boy. Here we go. So she just gets right into it. She's like, so how was my chocolate, Satoshi? How yep. was it? I hope it was delicious and worth accepting this year. Does she have a knife behind her back? She might. She's about ready to nice boat all up on Satoshi. Well, come to think of it, she might have put razor blades in his chocolate. Oof. You never know. Yeah. Needles. Yeah. Maybe may have tranquilizers mm. inside those cherubims. Yeah. Oreki starts to try to defuse the situation. But before he even can get a word out, Chitana just starts apologizing. Yep, like, it's all my fault. I did it. I left the room without locking it. It got stolen. It sucks. It's all my fault. I'm super sorry. I know how hard you worked on it. It's all my fault. And Bar's like, no, don't worry about it. It's it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything is good. Everything is fine. I have a happy it's time. All right. Yep. Yep. Good Valentine's Day. Had by all. Uh, I'm going to go. Okay, bye. And so she leaves. Satoshi's over there looking like cool cucumber. Captain Cool. He's a piece of crap. That's what he is. Big piece of crap. Just yeah, sitting right Ibarra over there. Puts on a strong face and is like, you know, you know, it's it's fine. It stings just a little. But maybe my chocolate got lost. I'm I'm going to go home now. It'll be OK. Bye forever. I'm glad yep. that Satoshi is making all of the girls sad, but it will be OK. Goodbye. I'm not going to go home and set myself on fire. No. Or anything like that. Nothing. It's like that okay. will happen. I'm not going to put my head in the oven. Be fine. Well, Tanda goes. Yeah. She starts to leave. And now Oreki is barring her from leaving. And she gets pretty... Uh, oh, yeah. She's like, look. Look. You need to move. I'm going to find whoever did this. And I'm going to bring the entire... Everything that my family can offer upon their head. She says, and I quote... I may need to take drastic measures, but I will find her chocolate. I don't want to know what Chitanda's drastic measures are. I think the Yandere is emerging. Yeah, I think so. I think this is one of the only times in the series so far where we've seen her have like a genuine, honest reaction to something. Oh yeah, she gets mad. Remember when we said that she never got mad ages ago? Yeah. Oh, she 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 rarely does, but this time she got she mad. Does. Now we know why she uh, she got mad an hour ago. Someone someone stole chocolate. Yeah, it's about all it takes. It's about all it takes. She's like, this was supposed to be a happy day for Ibarra, and now it's a sad time. It's a sad time, isn't it, Satoshi? It's a sad time. And she starts to go around Oreki, and he physically grabs her wrist. Yeah, it's like it, it's cool. It's cool. Calm down. And she he notices that it's turned into Chitirda. Oh man, Chitirda. It is so sad. Who sad? And he's like, you know what? I can't say I know how you feel. And I don't feel things nearly as strong as you do, obviously. But tell you what, leave it to me. I've got a plan. I know how to get it I back. I can't do it with you around. Yep. And she's like, do, do you know who did it? And he's like, I do know who did it. So just, just trust me on this one. I got it. I got it. It's good. Like, I know exactly who stole it. Yeah. It was the girl from Astronomy Club. The guys from Astronomy Club couldn't take it because it's too big. It's a big, unwieldy chocolate, and they couldn't hide it in a men's uniform. But if you were a girl, you could hide it up your skirt. You could tie it to your leg and surround your skirt, so that's who did it. So it will be okay. Yep. It's all fine. Life is good. So just go home. Everything will be sorted by morning. It's okay. He gives her... The verbal promise that I will get Ibarra's chocolate and I will hand it to Satoshi. You have my word. I will make this happen. Def. Def will do that. Chitanda does not seem super convinced, but she agrees to at least trust Oreki. Yeah. Because he was right that one time about the kid being called to the office. Yeah. They busted a... Remember when we had happy stories in, in this show? I don't. I neither do I. Come to think of it, <laughs> they've been mostly bummers. Come <laughs> they've, to they've been yeah, been a little, 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 little bummer. bummers, bummy. Even the, even come to think of it, even the uh, 
the pool episode was a bummer episode. Kind of was. So, man. I tricked you into watching a sad <laughs> show. You did. I was like, this show's so great. It's so much fun. They solve these stupid mysteries. And then, like, every episode, we're like, man, it's so, such a downer. They, they solve these mysteries. JoJo to lift our spirits after this. What happened in JoJo today? Oh, you know, Caesar died, but it was, it was a happy time. <laughs> Compared to what happened in, in Hyoka. In Hyoka. I was excited. They solve stupid mysteries, but they cannot solve their hearts. I was going to say they can't solve their feelings. Also, yes. So, she's gone. Chitanda has left the building. It's now just Oreki and Satoshi. Yeah. And honestly, the scene cuts to where they're still in the room, but it's gotten dark outside. Yeah. So they have pretty much sat there in silence for the, at least an hour. I think, I think Oreki was given Satoshi the old bad cop, bad cop with like a, <laughs> with like a lamp over his head. Just stared at him. Like, are you gonna, well, are you just gonna, let's be honest here. Are you gonna? Cactus was good cop. Oh, that's true. That's true. And they were just like, come on, just, just say it. Yeah, you don't just have give to. it up. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to wait for you. Take your time. It's fine. Instead, they decide to go to the Bridge of Tears. Oh, Bridge of Tears. Always the best place to have a revelation. So they're walking back across the bridge towards towards their houses. And Oreki's like, hey, dude, can I see your bag a second? Because he's been holding this small, itty bitty, uh, very small drawstring bag. And he takes it and he... Uh, Lifts it up in the air like he's about to throw it to the ground, but then he just sort of shakes it a little bit. Yep, it makes a little crinkly cellophane noise. And it's like, there, I have given you Ibarra's chocolate. I have fulfilled my promise to Chitanda. You jerk. Die. <laughs> You're the worst. Tell me one thing, Satoshi. Satoshi, one thing. Did you feel like a jerk when you broke her chocolate in half? You jerk. Yeah. You jerk. He also says that he knew pretty much from the moment he heard it was stolen that it was Satoshi. Yep. But it was I mean, he had suspicions given the fact that he was a really suspicious guy, but it pretty much nailed it when they asked the crafts guy about the poster and Satoshi said, yeah, the one side, um, it looks too, too low now. Yeah. And so Oreki figured he went up there, grabbed the chocolate, didn't realize it was going to be that big. And then to hide it in his bag, he had to break he literally it. and figuratively broke Ibarra's heart. Yeah, smashed it into a gazillion little bits to shove in his bag. What a jerk. Not only that, but he, you know, decided not to tell anybody that he did this this whole time. Yeah, he's like, look, we're even now. Last April, you helped me distract Chitanda with that silk spider society thing. Good job, you know, hitting back at episode one. Yeah, way back. So she's like, yeah, I remember that. But in that case, you were the only one to get hurt, Oreki. Yeah. I suspect you have a really good reason for this. I should hope, um, because you made Chitira cry. You made her cry. Because if you don't have a good explanation, I'm going to give you a punch in the mouth. How about this? He's like, is it a joke? If it was? And and if it was? He's like, well, then fisticuffs, sir. I I will punch you. (laughs) Because he grabs... Satoshi, by the muffler, pulls him real close into into real talk range, and is like, I will punch you. This was a joke. You're gonna get hit. Satoshi still got that stupid smirk of his on his face, Constant. which was charming up until now. Up until now, where you're like, Satoshi, you're a jerk. This is where he spills his backstory. All of it. Everything finally comes out, and we know who Satoshi has been this whole time. Kind of a jerk. I'm obsessive. You know that. Basically, he says, when I was a young man, my father took me into the city to see the Black Parade. No, wait. No, that's not 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 the Black Parade. Oh. I don't think so. Oh. I think he just wanted to be the best at something, but he didn't really. He was a tryhard. Yeah. He was an obsessive tryhard, is what he was, and it was very sad. So he was like, okay, this isn't working out for me, because I'm never going to be the best at stuff. And even when I am the best at something, I derive no joy of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I don't obsess over anything ever again. I'm just going to float, and life will be good, because I won't care so much. Yep. And it's worked out. It's worked out. It's made his his freshman year really happy. Except for Ibarra. He's worried that if he were to start a relationship with Ibarra, he might become that weird, crazy, obsessive boyfriend that he does not want to be. And he admits that he wants to actually be with her, but he doesn't want to obsess over her. And he's like, and I realize I'm being selfish 
But if I change for her, will I regress? I might. And Eureka's like, now hold up. What you say might be true, but in the process, you hurt Chitanda's feelings. You made all the girls cry. Most importantly, you made Chitanda cry. Yep. He made his girl cry. Don't, don't you go doing that. Meanwhile, we cut to Chitanda meeting with Ibarra to apologize. I think before we move to that, we should, we should realize the reason why Satoshi did all this is because he had run out of excuses as to why he could refuse the chocolate. Because last yeah. year, he used his sort of trump card where he was like, okay, well, it's got to be made completely from scratch for it to be real Valentine's chocolate, so I can't accept it unless it's real chocolate. Jeez. And she Jeez. did it this year, so he was out of excuses as to why not to accept it other than just a straight-up no. Pretty much. Which he does not want to give. So he was in a pickle, a die pinchy, as it is known in the anime biz. Then we do a, a flashback to girl time. Is this on the same sad bridge? No, well... No, because this one has, like, chain link fence oh, on yeah. one side. Yep. Uh, Chitanda is meeting with Ibarra uh, just to apologize, but it's quickly the other way around. Turns out Ibarra knew all along exactly what was going to happen. Yep. Like, as soon as, as soon as they told her that it was stolen, she was like, oh, I know what happened this time. Oh. Satoshi's a wimp. Oreki was covering Satoshi. Both of them, though, both Chanda and Ibarra, both agree Satoshi is a giant ass. Let's go have cake. Yeah, I do. I love it. They're like, boys are the worst. I hate boys. Let's go make and eat a whole cake. And Chitan's like, yes, yes, yes honey. We will go make and eat an entire cake. It will be okay. <laughs> boys are bad. One boy, for me, one boy, for you. Boy, boys are real bad, Chitanda. Maybe, maybe you should quit boys. Maybe, maybe Ibarra. Maybe you and Ibarra should flop around on a giant pillow. Oh my. Oh, it all comes full circle. It does. <laughs> Comes full circle. <laughs> mm. uh. May, okay, so I would like that original opening better if instead of a giant, like, star pillow or moon pillow... It was a cake? Cake would have been okay. Best would be her eggplant. <laughs> just both flopping around on a giant eggplant pillow. See, now that's that worth watching. Raised, as long as at the towards the end of the op, the pillow rotates and we see his big smiling face... <laughs> He would be smiling, just as, wouldn't just he? Just as the, the credits fade away. He would be smiling, wouldn't he? Mm. Oh, well. Also, you're weird. All right, well, let's, let's go back. Yeah, <laughs> we're going back to the boy bridge. Yeah. Where Satoshi's like, okay, so uh, I've spilled my guts. Now what? Uh, now it's time for you to grow up, and Oreki still punches him in the back of the head. Yep. And by like, back of the head, it's basically a Gibbs special. Yeah, pretty much. It is Gibbs special. He's like, you know what, Satoshi, you're good at what you do, but you need to work on how you do it. Yeah. Don't. And I thought that's that's very wise. Yep. Although, what is it good that he does? Uh, exactly? He does a database. He's he's a good jack of all trades, master of none, but he needs to just own it like he he's has been doing man of the world without being a jerk. Mm. As he walks away, or says to himself that in the end, he never did understand that Satoshi. Yeah. Suddenly it's film noir. The credits roll. And, no, no, uh, they don't. And shot heard in the background. No, 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 something else happens? Yes. We get all sorts of, like, actually oh. interesting things oh. happen. Oreki has called Chitanda, who is not flopping around on her eggplant, and he does tell her that I did give Ibarra's chocolate to Satoshi. I made it all happen. She is so happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. You're the best. Uh, I think she's just high on cake. Well, yeah, she probably is. It's the whole cake. Whole thing. Strawberries and all. And then we find out that Satoshi is standing outside somewhere in the snow with a cell phone, hovering over the call button for Ibarra. He does. He calls her. And then you know what he does? He calls her. He mans up. Well, we hope, we figured that yeah. he does. Because we just get a, hey, we need to talk. And that's it. And then we cut to poor Oreki. In his room, he has recovered his box. The sad His sad box. pity box. And he opens it up, and he takes a bite of his chocolate. And you know what he finds out it is? Bitter. It's bittersweet chocolate. Hashtag no bummers. All the bummers. All the bummers. I thought this was a happy show. Oh, and then we get the ending, where everybody's cute little cosplays again. I like the ending of the show. You know, the show's great every ending. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it does that. Maybe I think this is a happy show because it tricks me. Because for the second half of the show, 
it, you get this cute ending every time, and it pulls that movie yeah. trick where it gives you the last minute and a half is cool, and then you think that the whole movie's good, even though it's not. Yeah. It's like Jurassic it World, where that. Jurassic World's not a very good movie, but, you know, that dinosaur fight at the very end is really good. So you <laughs> the movie stops, and you're like, man, that was a good movie. And then you think about it, and you're like, oh, yeah, everything but the last 15 minute kind of sucked. Oh, uh, bummers. We don't... We really don't need any more bummers. We've, we've had enough. Surely, next episode... <laughs> We will have a happy, delightful, and well-deserved ending. Almost. Okay, have you we ever read... Will. Have you ever read... This is a bit of a spoiler for next week. Have you, have you ever read the, uh, the actual book that Princess Bride is based on? Have you read the actual The Princess Bride book? I've read, like, half of it or more. Well, the ending of it is the exact same as the movie, right? Yeah, but then it goes on to say because the the sort of theme of the book is that the the parent, the grandfather that re- would always read this book, edited it like on the fly mm-hmm. as he would read it to the kid. And the actual ending of the novel, The Princess Bride, the way it actually ends without the grandfather editing it is then everything went wrong. The miracle medicine wore off. The shoe, the horses threw shoes. Uh, everything bad then happened. But you know, we just don't we we edit that part that way it has a happy ending. You're going to want to do that next episode. Mm. You're going to want to have the episode end about a minute before it actually does. We, we shall see. We shall see. Uh, what was your best of this next to last episode of Hyoka? Oh, uh, the very beginning's real cute. I liked her hair. Oh, yeah, it's really I liked cute. her hair there. She normally does not have cute hair. She has I woke up and did not care hair. But so does Areki, so, I mean, it works for some people, I guess. That's true. Um, I have to say my best was Chitanda getting super worked up. She got real worked up. Like, scary worked up. Being physically restrained. That's pretty intense for her. Yeah. What was your, uh, what was your worst? Worst? Uh, Satoshi being a jerk the whole episode. Sitting there in the background giving sidelong glances, being like, oh, maybe we shouldn't oh, solve this mystery. This mystery seems real, real hard. Real complex yeah. mystery. I don't think we could, we ever... Never figure it out. My worst is is related to that, yeah. only it's bigger in scope. My worst is that he gets a personality that comes kind of out of nowhere. We we get sort of maybe hints of this before this episode. Well, I but... think we do. I think I think it's foreshadowed enough. You get the feeling that you know he's he constantly says it's like, look, I'm the flighty type. There's a reason why I'm not great at everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that, but it just seems like this particular aspect of his personality of being a gigantic jerk, the reasoning for it seems to come out of nowhere. Mm. Like, I understand that he was flighty, but the whole, well, I was obsessive and now I don't want to be obsessive. Oh, that's fair. It doesn't, it doesn't really seem like a anything a teenager would say. I, I feel like they would come up with something less, I don't know, well, profound sounding. Yeah, we do know Satoshi is great at, at real talk. He is. So oh. he is. He's got hashtags everywhere. Yep. Who do you have for uh, MVP? MVP? Oh, it was feelings. Feelings. Feelings for MVP. Either that or sc- hell of scream. Hell of scream. Well, those are also feelings. I think. Oh, you're right. They are. They are hell of screams. Hell of screams. Hell of screams. Not hell of screams. Hell of screams. Huh. Huh. Could be. Oh, I bet. Oh, uh, yeah. The video game is probably supposed to be Scream of Hell, but in Japanese, when you do the ofs, you do it backwards. Yeah, yeah you do it backwards, backwards from English. So, my MVP award goes to Chitanda for being a Yakuza enforcer. Okay, yeah, no, I'm down for that. Yeah, and uh, letting her Yandere finally blossom into full, full bloom. Good job, Chitanda. She flew her Yandere flag. So, next time, Cherry Blossoms, Closed Bridges, and... Broken hopes for the audience. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure what the broken hopes for the audience are. Uh, I'm just going to let you down we easy. I don't want you to get all worked up and then throw things at your... Throw your phone or your iPod or punch your YouTubes, whatever you kids I, today I do. I punch my YouTubes constantly anyway, so... Yeah, so, uh, you know, just trying to let you down easy. So, did you watch or do anything nerd related this week? I mean, I we've been we've been working through Sharp FE, and that game is legit. It remains so. Good, good. 
Glad you're enjoying it. We found uh, the brightness in this uh, fallen and disgusting 3D world. Really? What is that? Mamonin. A 11-year-old girl. Ah, Who's too perfect for this world. As they always are. Also, she gets bunny armor, and it's adorable. Of course she does. Why wouldn't she get bunny armor? Hold on, hold on, hold on. That just makes sense. Wow, that's yeah. um, See? that's a thing. Mamadri's carnage form. Her Button. axe has little bunnies on it too. So it does. She's got bunny what in the armor. What world is wrong with her hat? What? It's Why too, is it like a bonnet? It's too big for her. I see that. And it's cushioned on the inside, so when she gets hit, her head's fine. Uh, g- g- good. Yeah. It looks like a bonnet. Mamadri's adorable. But she also has rabbits on her axe. Yep. Rabbit axe. Like a rapidash? No. I finally uh, finally beat a gym today. That's nice. Pokemon I've Go. taken and lost a mini a gym. Well, our problem is there's no gym uh, near any of the places that we just sort of stop and sit at. Yeah. So there's no real place to actually go and like battle battle. Yeah, you have to go and kind of hunt them down. Well, there's one near work, but the only way to do it is either work there or stand outside in 90 degree sun with, oh yeah i bet that's hot with humidity it's not fun and you can't see your screen so uh so there was one out by the county fair and we went to that and for a glorious five minutes i i took i took the water tower and then someone beat my porygon oh you have a porygon how'd you get a porygon i hatched it oh lucky you Everybody goes on about how the evolutions are real hard to get or something when there's a gajillion Eevees in this area. There are. uh, Do you know how to actually evolve them to the one you want? You know, it doesn't matter because I have a gajillion Eevees, so I can just make a whole army of them. You could. We don't have them. They're they're not rare, but they're not not common. A gajillion of them. Every gym is filled with evolutions. We're still trying to figure out how to get very high level stuff because I got a Vaporeon finally. Ah. His meter bar is almost all the way to the right, but he's only like 700. Oh, you're not high enough level for it to be higher than. Like the higher level I get, is, does that bar allow more? It will, yeah. Okay. Or, do, or does it scale from where it is? It won't scale from where it's at. You'll have to pump it full of candies. Oh boy. Right now all the gems around here are Laprises and Snorlaxes. Oh, see, I have a Lapras. I named him Lapbus. I saw that. Does he take children to hell? Yeah, good. I submitted a bunch of my names to uh, Pokemon World Tour. Yeah, I saw that. I only had one good one. That was my Fearful Faucet. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. I keep seeing yours, and I'm just like, how? why does he have so many? Well, because so many. we live in a city where it's easy to get a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. I do like how there's at least one person that knows my the reason my Jolteon is called Quite A. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that. It's quite a Jolt Freak. Hold on. Nope, no idea. Uh, so this is a joke that is very multi-layered because it actually comes from uh, what's it called? Uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that in a very long time. Well, yeah, but it's also keyed off of an episode of Freakazoid. Oh, let's see here. Don't let me forget, but I have a question for you from a listener. Now, go ahead. What? The question is. A certain follower was following your tweets. Yeah. And you've had many tweets this week. Sure. And several of them have been about a uh, new Pokemon surrounded by Pikachus. Mimikyu. Yeah. Mimikyu. And I would like to ask you, what in the world is up with Mimikyu? Mim- he's a Mimic Pokemon. He's the saddest Pokemon they've ever invented. <laughs> and why is that? Well, you gotta, you gotta know. Poor Mimikyu. Because they just... I feel like the internet just decided... On this Pokemon's whole backstory. No, he's he's a sad Pokemon. How so? Let's see. Scroll down, and we have Mimikyu. Lives its life completely covered by its cloth and is always hidden. People believe that anybody who sees its true form beneath the cloth will be stricken with mysterious illness. Might be true. Uh, six dark places. May avoid sunlight. Um... The rising popularity of Pikachu-styled merchandise around 20 years ago is the reason Mimikyu makes itself look like Pikachu. In fact, this Pokemon is dreadfully lonely. And and it it thought it would be able to make friends with humans if only it looked like Pikachu. Yeah, he's the saddest. Mimikyu's Uh, the saddest. 
And here I thought the internet had just made that up. No. Based on it's that's the saddest. No, Pokedex even Pokemon entry. even Pokemon is bummers today. God. Mimiku's geez. the bummers. I like this stupid Pokemon thing. Or they're all stupid Pokemon things. I like this stupid bear thing. I, I don't. I think uh, people complain about Pokemon looking stupid every generation, but that one to me looks pretty dumb. I'm a bear with bunny ears yeah, on. That one's like, kind of dumb. Them on. I like giant. I like uh, giant isopod. Isopod, yeah. Also, Mudsdale is pretty sweet too. The Clydesdale. Uh, I do have an update about Baby Metal. Oh yeah. I listened to the second album. Okay. It's a lot better than the first album. Oh, that's good. Turns out, uh, the first one seems like a very, hey guys, isn't this a thing? Yeah. And the second one is, hey guys, this is actually a thing. I don't know. It just, it just sounds more like they've settled into their into their groove. Yeah. Plus, I realized while I was listening to it at the gym that all their songs, mm -hmm. uh, most metal albums, if we're honest, a lot of the songs on one album all sound the same. Yeah, I mean, that's legit. But because baby metal is a genre based on who is singing and yeah. rather than style, basically every song is a different metal style. Oh, that's nice. Which is kind of neat. I like it. Yeah, no, um... So the Quita is because in an episode of Freakazoid, they're flying a plane and the, the plane gets jostled and Freakazoid's girlfriend just busts into the cockpit and says, Quite a jolt, Freak! So it's a running gag in an episode of Freakazoid. Uh, so it's a jolty on, so it's quite a jolt. I, yeah, yeah it's okay. Quite, quite a jolt, Freak. So that's, I get it. Uh, the only other thing of note this week is I've watched Mob Psycho 100. Oh, is that the one by the... One Punch Guy? One Punch Guy? Yeah. How is it? It is really good. The first episode really? was really good. And its, okay. anima its animation is just spectacular. I suspect, given its style, it's probably very similar to the animation style of, of One Punch Man. I would imagine. Who animated One Punch Man? <sighs> I can't remember. Because Bones is doing Mob Psycho. Madhouse. Ah, well, Bones is doing this. So they're, they've, they've taken it real good. It's really great. So was it called Mob Summer? Uh, Mob Psycho 100. Mob Psycho 100. I shall have to look into that. It is a visual delight. Well, you can just watch till the op. Like I mean, that 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 lets you know a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's real great. Uh, we watched some episodes of Ilya. Ilya, which Ilya. is oh yeah, yeah, Prisma Ilya. Yeah. It hasn't been the best season so far. Not much to say about that. I haven't watched any more Berserk yet. I can't... You know, I I thought of a good way of explaining Berserk to you. Yeah. You remember... Well, you've, you've watched a lot of JoJo. Yeah. You know the animation style of the ops? Yeah. Um, it's like it's a whole, whole show, show look like that. Yes. Yeah, see, I don't think that would sustain itself for very long for a whole show. Yeah, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. But, but, breakout show of the, the season. But Nyan Nyan. Yes. The wife was very thrilled to find out Banan Yen was a thing. And I am thrilled that it's three minutes and I can understand everything he's saying. Well, isn't that nice? Yes, it is nice. Banan Yen. Banan Yen. He's a cat. And he's in a banana. He's in a banana or he is a banana? Now, see, that's up for debate. Okay. Who knows? I think he might be the banana. Banan but yeah. since he's hanging from a uh, banana stand... If someone came in and say ate the banana, would he still be a banana or would he be a cat? I don't know. These are these are very deep questions that this this series has elicited. I don't have answers for. I don't think there will be answers for. There's a plane. So oh, Jojo. Yeah, Jojo. Nothing happens in it. Not well, um. Well, I mean, Le jo No, they fight a vampire, and the concept yeah. of a vampire horse is introduced, which l raises some very interesting questions. It brings many fundamental. Also, things that the we title of the episode says a hundred against one, and that never happens. Two it says hundred against two. A hundred against two, and that never happens. Yeah, we start off. Wait. Yeah. How would you guys, our listeners, like to know about the small hotel that Cars has been hiding in? 
Uh, I mean, it's a it's an old hotel that Cars has been hiding in. Turns out, it's a massive 14th century castle. Yep. That is probably what would you say, two thousand feet tall? I mean, it's pretty tall. Look at the conifer forest around it. Yeah. Tell me, how big would you say a fir tree is normally? Well, I mean, I don't know. They can get pretty big. Pretty big, 40, 50 feet. Sure. Uh, they, they are like ants next to this building. So it's got to be skyscrapers. Yeah, I've, I've not noticed. Oh, you're right. Wow. Huh. It's a, it's an amazingly big building. Yeah, it's big. It was converted to a hotel in the early 1900s. Sure was. It was closed 10 years ago when the owner died, though. That's sad. Uh, cars has turned it into a shelter from the sun. And uh, Jojo and Lisa, having never been in it, shock, know nothing about its layout. Yeah. Up. Up. That, there's your <laughs> opening, guys. Cold <laughs> open is um, something from HGTV. This, this beautiful... This, this darling house is uh, 14th century. Uh, 14th century. It uh, looks up. bigger on the outside than it is on the inside. It wants to house nobles, but now it can be your own home. It comes with a miniature forest right outside the door. A uh, great place for a garden. Um, there are two coffee shops within walking distance. Um, you will also find um, on every ceiling uh, numerous footholds for vampires. anyone in your family who may or may not be actually want vampire. to hang from the ceiling. Or be vampires. And have plenty, plenty of space for bats. Um, also, every once in a while there may or may not be a door who might be a person. <laughs> this house is full of surprises. But when we get back from the op, we find out that Jojo is too depressed to deal with cobwebs. The cobwebs are not helping his mood. Cause, I you almost know, want to go through this this I almost want to go through this episode just using my very abbreviated notes. As that will probably be more entertaining <laughs> than going through the episode any other way. You you may not be wrong there. Yeah, basically they are walking through the hallway since you know they have no idea the layout. Yeah. It's okay. Who cares? Because they're following a trail of blood. That's true. Left by wham. Whammo. So it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, Lisa, tired of JoJo's babbling about cobwebs, uses her extraordinary and highly trained, highly honed power to remove the, the cobwebs. Yeah, she because. cuts them all with Lisa Why? Lisa Lansu, which is an attack name I've just made up. She used her hammer for destruction right there, I just like to point out. Uh, you know, is clearing cobwebs destruction or cleaning? There's mm, a fine she did line. She cut them in half. She cut them in half. Yeah, but it's cleaning. There's a fine but line. But the more important thing is Jojo, has his in balls. response, gets his balls out. Yeah, he's ready. And goes to the door. Goes to the door. He grabs his doorknob, and it's a fist. And it's gross, and it reminds me of Labyrinth. Yeah, it's a, it's a literal fist for the doorknob. He recoils in disgust. And the door says, I'm not a door. I mean, it, it should know. <laughs> I mean, you're right. Um... He may self-identify as not a door. Uh, perhaps he is a window or a vampire. It's a vampire. Or it a vampire door. Out, tries to attack Jojo, but Jojo blocks with his balls, and his balls get cut in half. Or his balls. We then get this guy's backstory, because that's what he... He pops out of the door, and if I were a vampire, I would pop out of the door. It's like, hi guys, let me tell you my entire life story. <laughs> Wired Beck, this is your life. First of all, yeah. I am not a door. <laughs> First off, I'm not a door. I'm a vampire. And and how did he become a vampire, pray tell? Uh, he was a bad dude, and Cars was like, hey, bad dude, be a vampire. He killed his lover and escaped from prison, but Lord Cars oh, no. made me a part of his gang with a mask. So there, he has my loyalty. I'm not going to let you disturb Lord Cars' rest. I, I had to pause this and, and think about this a second. I'm like, okay. Now, I could see this being Dio. Dio did this. But but these guys... You think the PBs would be above it? Yeah, well, you'd think maybe they would still turn people to the good old darkness. But, you know, they pretty much have their pick of whoever they want. Mm -hmm. They don't need to just go get the guy who killed his lover and escaped from prison. Mm. They could go down to the, oh, look at this guy who's guarding this place in the middle of the night. Look at him do a good job. Oh, look, vampire. Now you can uh, you can guard our door instead. You seem to be a uh, respectable gentleman who who may or may not be a door. Just well, uh, just hang out. I don't know how long they great. prepared this place. I think this might be a stopgap. This is like a temp. Sure, but I'm sure there's at least someone in the town who isn't a lover killer who escaped from prison that would do a better job than this guy because yeah, all he can do great. is snap his suspenders and make snide comments at Lisa Lisa's expense and wiggle. He does a little wiggle dance. 
and make weird noises. Uh, Jojo tells tells him that he is just a pawn, a pawn bound for hell. Uh, but then Lisa Lisa is like, "Hold up, hold up, Joseph. It's cool. I'm I'm gonna handle this." We then find out that Wired Beck is a spiky boy as he grows spikes. He really wants to hold her. Not sure why, other than he's the type of character to roll all of his otters. Yeah. Like, all of them. He rolls them all. Yeah. And Lisa Lisa says, well, I'm in a bad mood, but... And she puts on her deal with it glasses. Deal with it. She says, if you want to hold me, just try. And then we find out that Wired Beck is a spiky boy, a strong boy. Obviously. I mean, as one does... When challenged by a lady, you scream and shoot spikes out of your body. And then Joseph Joestar says something very strange here. He says, spikes. So that's what they are. They're spikes, not fingers. Good job. And he's covered in wire-like body hair. Yeah, sure. Now, this this was not brought up before because he didn't have spikes before. And um, it's not brought up again. No. I don't, I don't know why this line exists. But I will have you know, brother... That these are spikes. Not fingers. Not fingers. Yeah, good. Uh, well, Lisa Lisa decides to uh, muffler this guy. He She throws her scarf around him and then walks away, not even paying attention to him. And then she's like, hey, Jojo, come on. We're good. The the vampire. Yeah. Wired, whatever. Wired. It's very wired annoyed. Beck. Wired Beck. He's very annoyed. He's like, hey, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't ignore me. And he turns to Jojo like, hey, hey, you. A woman like that has to be punished, right? I mean, Jojo agreed with him, like, not a couple days ago. Yeah, but definitely. now he's just like, dude, dude, hang it up. You're you're pretty much already dead. So, sorry, brah. Interesting thing here that yeah. I noticed, and, and maybe I just haven't caught it in other shows, yeah. but in this particular scene, uh, when Jojo is basically mocking this guy yeah. before he explodes, yep. um, he ends all of his sentences in aura. I'm not really sure why. You'll get a whole lot of that in JoJo just because it's a masculine ending. So he does that a lot. So basically, the rest of the scene is no you, Ora. Yeah. Thing wired back melts. He he burns to death from the inside out. Yeah. And then JoJo is, as ever, a little bit sexist towards uh, Lisa Lisa. And then we go to the next room. Yeah. Well, let's pause. Okay. Let's pause and sure. consider, once again, our friend Hammond. <laughs> and um, what it can and cannot do. She put the scarf on him. Yeah. He tore it off. Yeah. Then he burns to death from the inside out. If such a technology existed, let's assume yeah. this is some sort of bug stomach something. Why hasn't this been used before? Advancements are being made all the time. I I, 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 I guess. She only has um, the one scarf. She had this one scarf... She had it the whole time that ACDC was at her house that one time. Well, you couldn't use it on ACDC. That'd just be ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're right. I mean, he's not hes not a vampire. Uh, he was an entire brain there for a while. Right. And he is not susceptible to Hammond like normal vampires are. Not in the same way, obviously. Right. Otherwise, right. they would have used it. Look, we, we, have to, we have to use this sort of logic here. If it would have killed him, they would have used it. Therefore, it couldn't have been able to kill him, or they would have used it to kill him. That makes sense. It's the only reasonable line of logic, really. Jojo thinks to himself that, Even hey, I am impressed. Lisa Lisa's pretty good for a girl. How about that? Yeah. Huh. At least it's like, okay, hey, hold up. Have you actually taken that antidote yet? He's like, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to drink it till Wham's dead. Because I made a promise to Caesar's ghost that to I would fight and keep living. Therefore, I shall not take the antidote to keep from dying. Yeah, well, I'm going to fight Wham first. I'm going to earn it. He wants to earn it. Right. He, uh, he offers it to Lisa Lisa, the ring for safekeeping. And she's like, but, nah. Uh, Lisa Lisa's like, no. I could no, get no. fragged at any minute. This isn't called Lisa Lisa's Bizarre Adventure. I know what's up. <laughs> Very true. Very well, true. they keep it going. We pad out the episode a bit more. Yep. This episode is the television equivalent to a driving scene in a bad movie. They eventually wind up at a room where Wham is just sitting on a cushion. Uh, JoJo's about to rush in, but Lisa Lisa holds him back. I mean, saying, fools rush hey, in. Hey, look at the floor. Uh, if you'll notice, there are glowing footprints on it. And JoJo's like, yeah, no, I saw that. That means Cars is in here, too. And yep. 
and then Lisa Lisa's like, oh, no, I wasn't talking just about the footprints. It feels like the breath of dozens is upon us. Dude, dude, dude what, didn't we make a big deal that vampires don't breathe? I was, I, I had that down here as a question. Yeah. Do vampires breathe? I mean, they don't. Yeah. See, I like to always default to World of Darkness rules. And World of okay. Darkness rules is they don't unless they're trying. Mm. They have to actually, like, think about it in order to do it. Yeah, and, well, the vampires that we see are clearly underlings, and I don't think that they would, they would, um... Care to do that? to do that. Yeah. That's not, either yeah, way, I they have a whole so. bunch of bat soldiers on the ce- ceiling, as you normally right. do. Like Dio did that one time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cars is, of course, the other guy in the room. He shines brilliantly, like, like his weird little saw blade thing from a while ago. Well, and, he starts to rave, I think. Yeah. yeah, he does start to rave. And then we get a and he title. He does compliment her also. Wow. You know, for a woman, you're pretty awesome at that Heyman thing. Yeah. Well, Good job. Yeah. Good job. These guys aren't the best. I mean, they're still mistreating ladies, only now with words instead of It's a step knives. up. It's a step up. We then get a title drop of the episode as they're like, wow, there's a whole bunch of vampire soldiers here. It's like there's a hundred of them versus the two of us. Whoa. Those womp. aren't good odds. Womp womp. So JoJo starts pacing around the room, doing his little dumb, distracting thing. But what he's really doing is unraveling his, oh wait, no, this whole thing's pointless, because we just drop it in a second and a half. So I don't even know why I'm bringing it up. Ah, this episode's not very good. So, yeah, he's he's trying to do that thing he did with ACDC. He's unraveling something, and it's a bright green string. He's woven all around the room, and then he's like, oh, wait, I was actually going to like kill you all with this, but you've noticed it, haven't you? So... I guess I'm not using it now. I'm like, okay, it may be true they noticed it, but they didn't do anything about it. You can still use it. They haven't moved. Just, ah. Well, like, a, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Lisa Lisa's <sighs> like, okay, look, guys, you're not going to kill us with these vampires. I'm going to tell you why. I've rigged the Stone of Asia, which I totally don't have on me right now, to Bakuhatsu unless I get somewhere at a certain time. So you're going to have to fight us one-on-one in order for this to happen. And JoJo's like, yeah, yeah, that's totally a thing that has happened. We yeah, totally have that's this. That's really cool. Also, that's the first time I've heard of that, but that's that's a good yeah, idea. Sure, like, yeah. I I mean, we we did one. that thing. So Lisa Lisa proposes a contest. We're going to have JoJo versus Wham and Lisa Lisa versus Cars for for the stone for the, to decide the fate of humanity. Winner take all. And the PBs agree. Like, sure. Yeah, why not? Sounds good. Sure. We got nothing else to do. Uh, we do have one other thing to do, which is the commercial break. That's so right. we get back from the break, yeah. and we get JoJo's best face thus far. Oh, do we? We do. Uh, that's a pretty good face. <laughs> it's a really good face. It's almost as good as Chitanda's face. Not sure why he's sneering here, but um, sure. You know, uh, uh, the the pillar guys, both Cars and Wham, have yeah. decided that tonight they're going to fight at the foot of Piz Berlina. At the Skeleton's Heel Stone Circle. Yeah. Which exists. Sure. Oh, it really does? Does it really? Well, I don't know. You made it sound like it did, so I was shocked. I don't, I mean, I don't we know. can look it up right now. Why don't you I'm, do that? I'm looking it up right I, now. I doubt it's real, but you I'm never looking know. At it. I'm looking it up. It's The first hit is a thing from JoJo, so I don't think it does. The <laughs> <laughs> first link is JoJo Wiki, so... I'm going to look up the other thing. Pis Berlina. Pis Berlina is a mountain. It's oh. the highest mountain in the Eastern Alps. Well, that's nice. And now you know. Is there a stone circle there? You could just look up Pezbolina stone circle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up stone circle. Stone. Um, the word stone doesn't even appear on their um, Wikipedia page. Well, so then I would imagine no. not. Uh, a fairy ring, maybe? It's almost fairies. the same. Um, almost fairies. Fairy. Nope, no fairies. Ring? Ring. Uh, that's a good one. Ring. <gasps> There's measuring and Ooh. glittering. Ooh. Nope, that's it. Okay, well, then no. All right, well, no. it's okay. It Either way, we, we have wasted less time than this episode has because the next, the next thing of any worth is that JoJo is going to go get the stone while Lisa Lisa stays here. As insurance. As insurance. So we do that. Uh, we do get a very important scene. JoJo has not forgotten about Messina. That's nice. He carries he his out. body. He, uh, he mourns the Pelly for a minute. And then he carries Messina home. I don't know if he's alive or dead. I think he's alive. Otherwise, I don't think he'd carry him home because, as he points out here, he's still pretty selfish, but he's become less selfish. Well, that's nice. He thinks to himself, though, 
is this compassion? Because all I want to do is wreck those bastards. Like, hmm, maybe you'll, not compassion, but close. You'll get there, close. Joseph. Uh, he goes home. Yeah. He finds the stone in Lisa Lisa's suitcase. And then decides to look for her panties, because JoJo's the worst. I mean, he didn't find a bomb, so he might as well find some panties, I yeah, guess. Yeah, because it turns out that Lisa Lisa was totally lying about the there being a bomb and it not being there on time. And JoJo's like, man, she's pretty clever to think of that under pressure and all that. And suddenly, a picture falls out. Oh, yeah. What, what's this? What is this? It, it's Erina. What? Yeah, it's a, it's a picture of Erina and Speedwagon in Zapelli's hat and Straits holding a baby. From a baby. From May 22nd, 1889. How is he baby? Oh, that's, that, that's 50 years ago. Why, why does Lisa Lisa have photos of Erna Obachan? Why, why is that? What's going uh, on? Well, we'll get to that here in a minute. In the meantime, we're just going to cut back to the Pillar Boys just chilling out by the uh, stone ring. They're just, they're just a chilling. Yep. JoJo's like, um, hey guys, I brought the stone. Look, it still does that laser thing. Now, look, I don't want to be judgmental about these things but in order to prove that the stone is real he holds a match up behind it right right and it shoots that little laser beam right sure does right he shoots it up into the sky isn't that nice it does yeah why yeah. didn't he just aim it at cars's head well i mean and just he's, be like he's the honorable sort and just be like hey look i brought the stone maybe like he <laughs> problem solved maybe like me he trusts that cars is going to play fair just like JoJo's going to play fair. Because I think that Cars is extremely trustworthy in all of this. Yeah, well, JoJo's not extremely trustworthy in any of this. JoJo hands uh, Lisa Lisa the stone. Yeah. And also the picture. Yeah, he's like, hey, t- tell me tell me these things. Lisa Lisa, spill the beans. Uh, the beans are spilt. Lisa Lisa was that baby saved by Jonathan Joestar 50 years ago. Well, by Erina. Well, that's slash now, also. Here's, here's an interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, she mentions that Erina... Lost her husband, Jonathan Joestar. Yep. On a ship. Yep. In the Pacific. Does she? She says, in the Pacific. Oh, well, that's wrong. It was in the Atlantic. Well, yes. It was in the Atlantic. Yeah, we've goofed. Somebody goofed that one. Maybe Lisa Lisa goofed. Maybe she doesn't know. Maybe Straits lied to her. Who knows? Maybe. Because it turns out she was she was raised by Straits, right? And yep. JoJo killed her... Uh, her foster dad, and that makes her feel complicated. Yeah. yeah. Also, it turns out Lisa Lisa's over 50 years old. That's weird. She looks like she's in her late 20s. Lisa Lisa, more like Baba. Baba, he says, pointing right at her face. Yeah. Which means, like, crone. Yeah. Old lady. Old old maid. Well, it doesn't matter, because the Pillar Boys has a vampire army that they're gonna put in the stands of this arena and yep. chant Wham's name for all of next episode. <laughs> She's like, okay, well, there's no time to talk now. Um, I have very important things to tell you, but we have to go fight to the death. Yeah. So I can't tell you in case we die. Also, look over there. Hell horsies. Oh, my goodness. And we're going to get something that's really great and really stupid. Yes. There's a giant earthquake. Uh, suddenly, man-eating horse dinosaurs yep. run over to Wham, who stops them. Because they obey his charm command. His, his gaze. And he's like, hey, sure. check this out, guys. We have horses, and we put masks on them. Now we got vampire horses. Huh? Did they huh? make special horse masks? Or did I they try and know. use the people mask? Because a I horse's brain is in a mask. kind of a different spot than a people brain. Well, the spikes are long. I mean, cars can make whatever kind of mask he wants. No, I know, but that's my question. is, Did they make specially made... Horse masks. I certainly so, hope so. When? Um, when they wanted these vampire horses. Oh, okay. When was that? Had they planned for this Earlier already? today. Oh, okay. I mean, Cars is real yes. good. Also, here's some things you might want to know. Okay. First of all, we're going to use these vampire horses in a chariot battle. Yep, they're going to Ben-Hur. Ben Hur. Yep. Also... Have you seen the previews for the new Ben-Hur movie? Not, I didn't even know there's a new one coming out. Yeah, it looks so bad. <laughs> oh, dear. So bad. Well. Now, here's another thing. Like, if, if you want to be curious about why we're doing a retro uh, chariot battle, they have dressed up their vampire army in Roman centurion gear, right? Yes. 
All like, these vampires are like newly made vampires, right? So they're like modern day criminals. And they're just like, yeah. hey, you guys, you guys, you guys, put on Roman armor. It'll be sweet. I mean, if you, if you had a fetish for that and you then had a vampire army that would do your bidding, would you not tell them, I hey, mean, guys, dress up in, you know, maid outfits? Yeah, or right. Yeah, sure. Huh. You like movies about gladiators? Well, ever seen a grown man naked? Uh, Jojo has. Uh, Jojo has. These guys. Also, another thing about these horses, yeah. which is pretty interesting, they have, they have 150 horsepower. Yeah, so that means each horse, is that each chariot is 150 horsepower, or each horse? I don't horse? know. If the horse is the horse, would he still not have just one horsepower? Well, yeah, he has one vampire horsepower, which is equal to 150 oh. regular horsepower. Is that is that VHP? Yes. Can we start doing things based on that instead? We could. That's a new Imperial unit, I think. We could. We could do VHP, which is vampire horsepower, which is equal to 150 horsepower. It would make, uh, it would, it would definitely get rid of some inflation we've been having when it comes to car power. Mm. Oh, by the way, um, we were discussing this earlier. You know how some electronics stay on all the time yeah. and leach energy? Yeah. Um, I think that amount of current should probably be measured in vampires. Ah, uh, sure. So, so I'd tell you. Yeah, that no, seems yeah. good. Jojo here has a good point. How He's am like, I going to control now, these wicked horses? Because Jojo's getting vampire horses too. Because it wouldn't be fair otherwise. And Wham yeah, is yeah, nothing but, if not fair. He's like, how can, how can we trust the vampire horses given that, you know... They're vampire, vampire horses. horses. I, they have little sharp piranha teeth. Now, is that a side effect of getting vampirized? Or do they file them down to be, like, little sharp piranha fangly? I would assume that at least two of them were because of the former. But one has to wonder about the latter. Yeah, because they have, it's like piranha teeth. Like a chomp yeah. chomp. I think they may have filed them down. Yeah. It's okay. Cars explains that the reins for the horses conduct Haman. Yeah, so you can control them with Haman stuff. Yeah, and Lisa Lisa proves that this does in fact work. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's The nice. vampires root for Wham!, in a chorus of cheers. What I like about JoJo is how it explains things that does not really have to be explained. It likes to raise questions just to be like, hey, look, we thought of this. We didn't what? think of the actual plot. That's Who cares about that? But we did think about how, how are they going to control these horses? How are they going to control vampire horses? Because if they had just said JoJo can control vampire horses, you'd be like, sure, yeah, he's a strong boy. He can probably do that. This also brings up some other questions about horses. Yeah. When Jack the Ripper... Popped, popped out of a horse? Out of a horse. Was the horse a vampire? Not yet. I mean, he could have made it a vampire Is he horse. now a vampire? No, because it's in two halves. And you can kill no. a vampire by cutting off its head. And we no. know that happened no. to a horse. No, Dio cut off his own head and he didn't die. Oh, yeah, you're right about that. So maybe there's a horse Is vampire there a vampire head. horse, like, <laughs> underground somewhere? Yeah, there is one head of a vampire horse <laughs> chomping at the bit to a... Oh, well. Jojo takes off his shirt in a very manly way, uh, poses sweetly, tells Wham he's not going to drink this lip ring until he kills him, dons uh, Caesar's headband, and then we round about. Yeah. Uh, interesting thing about that ring. Remember when uh, he defeated ACDC and he took the ring and drank it? Yeah. Do you remember how he broke it? Like, he just sort of snapped it in half. It didn't, it didn't take much yeah. to actually break it. Uh-huh. Where has he put this particular ring containing the only antidote for the remaining Around poison his in his body? Well, he put it on his pinky. Um, what do you think he's going to be doing with that pinky here in a minute? Uh, fighting. Yeah, probably not the best place for that. It's got plot armor. Look, it's okay. I'm just saying that... Like, if, plot armor stuff. It's right there. You, you put it in a pocket. You'll be all right. You know, other than the thing you're going to smash wham with, probably. It'll be okay. The, the battle begins, except it doesn't. Because show's over. It'll begin next episode. Yay. So, I know there wasn't much in this episode, no, but if you not. had to pick a best, yeah. what would it be? Uh, Wired Beck. Really? Sure, why not? With his craziness? What else am I going to like? I don't know. I like the fact that we suddenly get some backstory for Lisa Lisa. Uh, that's pretty cool. I mean, we haven't had anything about her before. Yeah, you're you're right. So, there's that. Is your worst the same as mine? Well, what's yours? Mine is... I mean, we had the best being 
some backstory, but really there's nothing else in this episode. Yeah, there's nothing in this episode. It's a it's a waste of an episode, if we're honest. I mean, you saw how fast we got through it. Yeah, it's not That's very That's literally all that happened. Not a very good episode. <laughs> nothing happens in it. Do you have an MVP? Um I mean I guess it's Lisa Lisa. She fragged wired Beck pretty hard. She asked a pertinent question, like why haven't you had that thing yet, Jojo? That's a good question. And he has a dumb answer for it. Yeah. Uh I also have Lisa Lisa for my MVP. Only it's because she put on her deal with it glasses and that's cool. That's pretty cool. But that's oh, it. Oh, that's what that was. I was like, something just started cheering in my ear right after you said the, <laughs> right after you said she put on her deal with the glasses. I was like, did he, yeah. did, did he make like a cool emote or something? It's like, no, I started the next episode of Jojo on Crunchyroll, which is them awesome. all chanting. <laughs> it's like, she put on her de- a deal with the glasses. Yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> did he like send me a video? Well, time. Isn't that exciting? She put on her, her uh, deal with the glasses. Yeah, the preview for next time just has a bunch of vampires screaming, you know, whammo over and over and over. And so that's it. Yeah. Next time we will get into what makes a true warrior. And perhaps instead of a hundred versus two, we'll have two versus two. Although given JoJo's um, recent bout with not giving us what it promises, maybe everyone will just die. Sure. Why not? Maybe a true warrior is the one that doesn't fight. Hey everyone, thanks for listening. If you have comments or questions about Hyoka, Jojo, or just want our inane take on anything anime related, you can get in touch with us on Facebook or Twitter at Anarchy Podcast. Also, make sure to check out the show notes for bonus content and links to stuff we talked about this time. So, thanks for listening and see you next time on Anarchy.